an ode to metal church and a chip a trip down memory lane it's getting a little bit chilly out as i'm going for my walk sans dogs sans not just dog in the singular sans dogs because uh i don't have pavel or finny so i can actually get a good walk anyways listen to uh deep purple highway star on my walk and it reminded me i love that song freaking machine head by deep purple is a fantastic album all there is to it but remind me of uh, a 1984 album called metal church uh, by the name of the band metal church and uh, they had their version of highway star and i like that better just because it's metalish or or more metalish i should say faster heavier and i just loved it man and uh i just so i just i had forgotten how much i loved metal church growing up so check this out I moved to uh, the D.C. area in 1985, uh, Silver Spring, Maryland, all right, in 10th grade, yeah, 85. I guess it was down there, June of 85, I think. And, um, and uh, where I was from, um, you know, there was just heavy into like Grateful Dead, which, uh, Pink Floyd, oh, and I just, I didn't like any of that crap. Uh, me and this guy named Brendan, we used to smoke some of the uh, Devil's Grass, uh, listen like David Bowie and uh, you know hippie kind of music, and uh, he liked it. I, I just always like harder, harder stuff. But there wasn't anything going on back then in harder stuff. You know what I'm saying? It's just as bad, uh, horrible. At least anything in the uh, in the mainstream. You know, I've said this a million times. The hardest song you could ever hear would be uh, Sammy Hagar, um, heavy metal. One way ticket to midnight, hollering heavy metal. And, that, and it's like, dude, that wasn't that hard. And then uh, Judas Priest, you got another thing coming. That's it. They're like, you know, there's nothing else out there on the radio. Um, you know, you had to go and get an LPs and stuff. I don't even think they had, I guess they had CDs. Yeah, they had not CDs, but uh, cassette tapes. But basically, you know, if you couldn't find it on the radio, and I didn't have a car, I didn't have no money, so I was unable to go and, you know, acquire music. So it's just basically whatever's on the radio, just oh, horrible stuff. Tom Petty was always on the radio. And I actually like Tom Petty, it's just, you know, it's not heavy. Anyway, so we'd sit there just, uh, I remember we'd sit there and smoke dope at night. We'd sneak out of the house, smoke dope, and just literally just sit there and watch the stars. You know what I'm saying? It was uh, you know, a couple of pot, potheads from Maine. I was notorious as a pothead. In fact, I remember... Uh, my yearbook in seventh or eighth grade, I can't remember. Uh, <laughs> I haven't looked at it, I mean, literally freaking 34 years, but something like that. I just remember, uh, uh, you know, hey, to a, to the school pothead or something like that. And, you know, it's like, oh, I'm so cool. Uh, stupid. Anyway, so when I, uh, uh, to say the least, I just was uh, a troublemaker. Just, you know, getting to. You know, smoking dope in seventh grade. I remember in seventh grade or eighth grade, something like that. You know, getting in trouble. Uh, we had our eighth grade dance at King Middle School, and a bunch of us on Peaks Island got drunk as skunks with the monks uh, in front of school. I remember passed out, puking all over the place. I remember in the uh, the beginning of ninth grade, I couldn't see to save my life. I was blind as a bat, so my dad got glasses for me. This is when I was living with my dad before he moved to D.C. I remember just there's a school right up the street from where I lived in Portland called Nathan Clifford, which is now sounds like Primo Condos now. And uh, there's a field party there and getting drunk as a skunk with the monks and uh, passing out in the field. This is ninth grade now and uh, losing my glasses. And my dad's like, dude, I, anyway, I couldn't see. I was just, uh. Anyway, so uh, so then you know my mom said you need a uh, in between ninth and tenth grade my mom says you need a different direction in this life and uh, she sent me to live with my dad in the D.C. area and I didn't know anybody as a I mean I was just coming from Maine yeah, I just uh, you know I, just, uh, I had no friends essentially it's just you know loser and not really a loser just like. You know, I don't know. I just, it was weird because, you know, I had a lot of friends back in Maine. So moving to D.C. area was, man. So that first year was bad. Um, I had some friends and stuff, but, you know, basically it was just, it, was, it sucked. No other way around that, man. It sucked donkeys. And uh, and one time, my dad has said he was going to get the, a job back in Maine. I cannot tell you how stoked I was because, like, I just had no friends. I mean, I had a couple, you know what I'm saying? Like, acquaintances I'd hang out with on occasion. 
me and this guy Samir, he's an Indian guy, and uh, he liked hockey, I liked hockey, so we go see hockey, which is kind of cool, but, you know, he's kind of like me, just kind of, you know, outcast, not even outcast, just, we didn't have any friends, you know what I'm saying, and I was like, ah, he was a good guy, I liked him a lot, it's weird that an Indian guy liked hockey, but, uh, and I, I don't know, um, it was depressing, man, because you go from being, you know, almost a cool kid, but you had friends, I was never a cool kid, I was always kind of like a, an outcast, but, you know, I was, uh, you know, I was, I was friends among many outcasts, you know what I'm saying? And uh, you go down in D.C. and you're you're not even an outcast. You're just ignored, essentially. This sucks, dude. Changing school sucks. And here in D.C., I was a white kid from Maine. You know, I mean, there's no black people in Maine. And uh, coming down to D.C. area is like, you know, the, my school was very diverse. And I remember, like, my first day in school, some black kid was like, hey, you got any money for I was waiting the lunch line? And a black kid came up to me and goes, uh, hey, you got any money for lunch? I said, I don't have any money. He said, I don't have any money. I said, yeah, man, here's, I gave him some money. And we had this uh, guy, security guard, who came up and said, was that kid harassing you? It was a black security guard, Jackie, big Jackie. And I said, no, I just asked him for some money. He goes, dude, don't do that again. I said, why? Because he's, <laughs> he's not asking you for, I mean, he's asking for money, but he's got his own. I said, really? So you could tell I was like a, a, a fish out of water. And it's more urban schools. In hindsight, it's kind of funny, but the kid just said, hey, you got money for lunch? Yeah, it was funny. <laughs> And Jack and the security guard came up, so don't do that again. I said, okay, that's weird. And I, uh, <laughs> it's funny, man. I said, look, at the hindsight, if that's the worst that ever happened to you, you're okay. Be it as it may, I was a fish out of water. So my dad was about to, he said he was going to get a new job back in Maine. I was like, sweet, I want to get the hell out of here and get where my friends were. And so we went back. I can't remember if we, we didn't go back to move. We went back for some reason to, ch to I guess, look at neighborhoods. I can't remember what we're doing. But it was, uh, it was in the fall. And, um, yeah, it was in the fall. And I linked up back with my friends, who I knew on Peace Island. I, I, just, I don't really remember much. I just remember we went to this party at my, uh, my godfather's house on Peace Island. And... Uh, <laughs> And I was with my friend Bobby Smith, and Bobby's just, he was my best friend growing up, you know what I'm saying, and just a good guy. I think he has some, uh, you know, self-inflicted hard life. I th it sounds like he's doing okay. I, we connected on Facebook, and uh, we never really connected much. Uh, we had definitely hugely different political viewpoints. Um, but he, uh, you know, he would, and I, not on Facebook anymore, but he was a good guy. You know, he's just my best friend, he's funny as hell. Uh, just him and his brother Frankie, funny as hell. Just you know. Anyway, long story short, Bobby. Uh, apparently, he was out in L.A. like working for a freaking pretty significant metal bands. Um, he just a metal head to the bone, hair down to his butt. Um, I guess when he got out of high school, he moved to L.A. to get involved in the the metal industry. This would be about the mid to eight, late '80s. I guess he went all over the world. I don't know if he's in a band. I, was, I never heard more. He just you know we never connected again too bad anyway long story short uh he uh, he took we went to his party down his uh it was his uncle my godfather uh house in uh in uh main on uh, peaks island you know just some little ranch uh, one bed one bath and i remember we were drinking so much and i just passed out right by the toilet puked up all over the place you know people come in drunk as a skunk taking a leak I'm sure they leaked on me, you know, purposely by accident. I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, the moral, the point of this is uh, Bobby had introduced me to this band called Metal Church. Again, he just introduced me to their music. And uh, I remember going, and then my dad, for some reason, we didn't end up moving back to D.C. I can't remember. I mean, we ended up moving back to Maine. I can't remember why. And, uh, and I just remember saying, and so when... So we went back to the D.C. area. It was disappointing, but I just remember Bobby said, you should check out this band, Metal Church. And I was like, it was like, holy crap, we finally have some harder music, man, finally. And it was like, so basically what happened was, you know, the Judas Priest Iron Maiden stuff of the early 80s became like more technical with synthesizers and just, uh I don't know if you ever followed the thing with David Lee Roth and Eddie Van Halen. Um, after Eddie Van Halen died, there's a lot of videos like Rick Beato and, and stuff talking about how David Lee Roth and Eddie Van Halen, uh, you know, split it, why they split Van Halen up. It sounded like, a, well, 
what they said was David Lee Roth said, Eddie Van Halen, you're a, a freaking guitarist. You know, and uh, Eddie Van Halen wanted to be you know, like, of a hard rock band. Let's stay a hard rock band. It's down like Eddie Van Halen wanted to be more in, uh, in, uh, instrumental, or not instrumental. Um, beyond, he didn't just want to be a metal guy or a hard rock guy. He wanted to be more uh, what's the word? Uh, psychedelic, but more synthesizers and stuff like that. You know, like that horrible album, 1984. Horrible. And just more uh, progressive, I think is the right word. There's a word I'm looking for. I'm out drawing a blank what it is. And, uh, and Daley Ross said, no, we're, met, we're a, a hard rocking band, you know, a, a rock band of the 70s. We don't want to go that, that way. Experimental, I guess. And uh, I guess Eddie did, and I guess Eddie was in charge of the band. The band was, after all, named Van Halen. And so Daley Roth and uh, Van Halen, they, they split up. Well, anyway, so that was in a time where there was a lot of experimental bands going on, a lot of synthesizers, a lot of softer rock. Oh. Horrible. Even Rush went into that. Draw me crazy. Morning or afternoon. Doing? I'm doing fine. Stay warm out there. Cool, Feels good though, as long as you got a shirt on. Yeah. Have a good one. And uh, so there's a lot more experimental, just soft and oh, and just I love you, you love me. Oh, horrible for a guy that likes rock. I'm sure Daily Roth felt the same. So here in this metal church, it's like, oh, man, thank you, good Lord. It was like, it was just like the hardest thing out there for, you know, for me in 1985. Yeah, 1985. Now, you know, lo and behold, there was harder stuff out there, which I'd find later that summer. But before that, I did not know that. You see what I'm saying? So I was ignorant about harder stuff in music. Um, but later on, I found out, and I was just like, oh, is like freaking this massive dopamine rush hearing more and more harder metal hardcore uh just it was fantastic it was like literally it's like oh where have you been all my life anyway so going back i was listening to metal church it just brought back memories of you know my white trash days up in maine just like nothing going on a big old loser and i'm not a stupid guy i've always liked to read i've always been thoughtful I've always been analytical. I've always liked numbers, you know what I'm saying? But it's just like, you know, at some point, at something, I just wasn't, school didn't do it for me. I like to party. I like to hang out. I have always hated authority. I've always hated taking orders from people. It's just interesting when you look back in hindsight. That part of me hasn't really changed. I don't like to party. Um, you know, I do, but that's why I don't, because I know what would happen if I did. But where, where I'm going with this is, oh, I've got a guy trying to turn here. Is that uh, it's just you hear some songs you're like man, and then long story short, I had forgotten how good this band was, Middle Church. Oh my goodness, the freaking singer! I was just watching a live version of their song "Gods of Wrath" from uh, 2005. You know, this is 20 years later after their their initial release. That guy is still hitting the high notes. I was like, how does that guy do that? Because you know he's like, you know, like if you listen to the Pogues, like Shane McGowan, he's a drunk as a skunk, man, and smoke and all that. His voice is shot. I'm like, his, listen to this guy from Metal Church hitting those high notes on a live show. You know, presumably it wasn't uh, manipulated with some kind of computer, but my, it's amazing to me. Amazing to me. Anyway. I just thought I'd share those stories with you. That's what ultimately happened. And uh, I met some kid in, uh, in when I were back in the D.C. area, Maryland, Silver Spring, named Will. I can't remember how I met him. He was a punk, literally like a punk. With a, There's a band called The Exploited. I forgot the dude's name, but he had this, and I can't remember, Mohawk. And back, no one had Mohawks back then. No one dyed their hair. And Will had a Mohawk that was dyed red. I think it was in my English class, if memory serves. That's how we got to know each other. And um, anyway, one time he had a friend up in Maine, actually. And so one time we, uh, he had driven with me and my dad up to Maine. I can't remember why we were going up this time either. Maybe that was the same time. I can't remember. Anyway, so Will had introduced me to like, like punk rock bands, I don't know. I'm trying to think of some of the old bands back then. Agnostic Front was one, but more of the punkish bands, um, not the hardcore bands so much. Uh, uh, the Exploited, 
GBH, which I never liked. The Cramps. I don't think he was into the Cramps. Anyway, some of those old classic punk rock bands. There's one I'm missing, Dead Kennedys, which never did anything for me. Uh, it seems like there's another one from D.C. Uh, he never really introduced me to Bad Brains, but a lot of stuff I didn't like. I was like, yeah, that doesn't do it for me. It's just it's too whiny, to be perfectly honest with you. I've always liked the more toned metal stuff, the toned down metalish hardcore stuff. The punk never did anything. Anyway, so we're going up to Maine one time, and uh, I just remember listening to it. My dad was driving. I will put on some of that metal stuff, that punk stuff. I was like, dude, this sucks, man. <laughs> Wait, well, so then that summer, Will said he was going to go out for football. I said, hell, I'll go out for football. I've, I, you know, I played to ninth grade, eighth grade. I sucked, but I've always loved football. And I said, you know, it's a good way to meet some friends. Um, you know, I'd like to do that. And, uh, you know, I'd, <laughs> I was a little guy, but I said, yeah, I don't care. And, um, you know, I wasn't all that into it. So I went out for football. I got contacts. And uh, that changed. It was weird, man. All of a sudden... I was on the football team, I had contacts, and next thing I know, like, you know, kind of chicks were digging me a little bit, not much, but a little bit, you know, I was able to get girlfriends and stuff, and it was weird, I was like, uh, and I never played, I mean, I probably played, I think I started a couple games, but I just wasn't that good, I mean, I just, I didn't care that much, I'm not that competitive in that regard, and, uh, but, you know, I, so my, so any time we played in the bud, I'd be one of the two or three guys that had a clean uh, jerseys, which was always embarrassing. All these other guys would come off like dirtiest, and here comes me in my clean jersey, which showed you that you'd play. But I, you know, I cared, but it wasn't that big of a deal. I wasn't committed to to playing. But I got to meet some people. Got to go to some, you know, the cooler kid parties and stuff. And you know, people got to know me a little bit. Um, again, it's still kind of the outcast in terms of, you know, I'd hang out with the cool, cool kids, but uh, you know, the hardcore kids, the punk rock kids and stuff. I enjoyed. We go to shows and stuff, and not the cool kids or anything. But I had friends, you know what I'm saying? And that changed. It's weird, though. Once you got contact lenses and, you know, cut my hair a little bit and, you know, play football, I guess I didn't look like a geek as much. Strange. But uh, anyway, so that's what happened. And then uh, it was me and this guy named Timmy uh, in this in between, uh, between 11th, 10th and 11th grade. So he played, too, on a football team. And uh, he had a car. And I just remember, I think it was like after practice one time, we went up to... Uh, the Wheaton Mall, if memory serves, uh, there's a Little Caesars, and we sat outside Little Caesars. We went to Little, I can't remember what we were doing. Uh, we went to Little Caesars and got, uh, you know, a pizza pizza. And that's when he put on Minor Thread and Void, uh, both bands from DC. And that's when I was like, holy crap. So that wasn't punk rock, that was hardcore. And that, I guess Void you'd call kind of punk rock, but it's different. And that's when everything, remember, like the first time I, I heard Metal Church, I was like, oh. It was the first time I heard Black Sabbath, the first time I heard Metal Church, and the first time I heard that void, uh, void in minor threat. I was like, oh, man, where have you been all my life? And that, that was just, it was, it was amazing, like, how genetics, I don't know what it is, but it just hit me like freaking, like, some people get addicted to crack. I'm just telling you, man. You know, the song by Boston, you know, when I'm, uh, wrote, I'm Marianne, see my Marianne walk away. When I'm down and thinking low, I hide in my music, forget the day. I dream of a girl I used to know. I close my eyes and she slips away. Um, Brad Delp, what a, oh man, what a story that is, that Brad Delp. Oh, what an amazing guy. Just sad, man, just fighting depression. Anyway, so uh, well, that's how it always was for me, whenever I had you know, issues of contending with, you know, broken, uh, you know, fights with girlfriends or, I don't know, anything. I just, or fights with kids. We just, I still got a lot of fights. I always got a lot of fights in school. I just go back and turn on Slayer or Metallica or some, you know, Agnostic Front, uh, Nuclear Assault. Just, I just, uh, that would always be my reprieve. Just listen to hard music, man. It's crazy. Sheer terror. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> just, I'm still like that to this day. Not really so much anymore. As you get older, it's just. Uh, but it's just funny that that uh, that music would uh, just make you like, man. Oh, it, you know, just it is like it relieve you. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, there's a little boat for Osnoff and uh, Warnock. 
Nope, Niet, as we say, Russian stooge Niet. I can figure out how to say no in Mandarin, because uh, that's what we'll all be speaking soon. Anyway, it's just some blast of Paso, an O2 Metal Church. Such a good band, lots of memories. We'll see ya.